I, I read a story the other day, just actually yesterday, and there was a guy who owned a bunch of Dunkin' Donuts franchises, a bunch of them. And one day he decided that he's going to play Christian music in all of his stores. Mm. His business doubled because the people were happier, the employees were happier, and they just enjoyed having a more positive vibe around them yeah. and increased his entire business by 2x <laughs> That's amazing. by just making that one That's small amazing. change. Yeah. And I'm like, there's something to that also, like the power of just surrounding yourself in it living it mm. and worship right if you don't believe then that music is christian music mm. and if you believe it's worship music right it's so powerful and just being in it every day i have a friend steve weatherford and beautiful man and solid in his christian faith and he walks around, and he has a little speaker he clips to his shirt. <laughs> this dude, he's just playing worship music all day long, <laughs> dude. And he doesn't care. He'll just walk behind you and is playing. He's like, hey, man, what's up? Nice uh -huh. to talk. Like, it's not even there. Like, he, he doesn't. He walks around the soundtrack. <laughs> he doesn't address it. He's like, hey, man, how's it going? And it's just in the background because he wants to stay in the faith Yeah. all day. I think that's why mm. he does it. And. Yeah, music is one of the ways we can we can do that. Because I'm, especially recently, I'm very cognizant of the music that I listen to. There used to be a time where I listened to anything because it was cool or it was popular mm. or it sounded like fun. And as you kind of get a little bit older and you have kids around, I'm like, oh, do I really want that song playing in the car while my daughter's in the car? I think about that all the time. And I... I got tired of trying to figure out, okay, is it a good song, is it a bad song, is it a good song, is it a bad song? No, I don't want you to listen to this. I don't, like, that's not a good message. Listen to this. Mm. Because like music, you like without realizing it, it's penetrating your brain. So now I just play like worship songs in the car only because I don't have to think about it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I just keep it on loop and I don't have yeah. to worry about my kid. Either that or uh, my daughter likes Hop Little Bunny. So <laughs> it's one of those yeah, two. I don't know that one. <laughs> right? But the music is really important to your life. It changes how you feel. It changes mm -hmm. how you think. Um, it has so much impact. And we are flooded with negative music. Where do you think your journey music is? Because your most recent song, Beautiful Day, I love that song, by Thank the way. Thank you. It's amazing. It's such a good way to start the day. Yeah, it's a great morning song. <laughs> it's a phenomenal yeah. morning song. It's a great it's morning like song. The, if you could have an alarm set to that song, that's the best way to wake up. Right. You know, where do you think your evolution in your music is? Kind of being more cognizant of these things. Maybe you didn't think about it as much when yeah. you were younger. So I think it's nuanced, but mm. your spot on music is powerful. And the person who's creating the music, and often it's more than one person mm. in the studios, sometimes multiple people, what, that creation is a crystallization of their emotional state hmm. at the time of creation. In some traditions, they believe that about human beings, as a side note. Hmm. You know, the state of the mother and the father when they hmm. conceive has a big, they believe a big, huh. uh, has a lot to do with how that child turns out in their disposition. Interesting to think about. But going back to the music, because this is a different kind of baby. Well, now, right? now I'm thinking yeah. of my parents. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, damn, what were they They're thinking about? They're pissed off at each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what were they thinking about? I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't even want to go there. Right. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm here for. So this, this emotion gets crystallized. And for me, I want to ask what you think about this, but sometimes I'm writing and there's all this anger or this sadness or this guilt that comes out and it flows out of my soul into my pen, into my microphone, into my song. And sometimes those songs got to the world and they're not happy. Hmm. They're not beautiful day. But someone else 
who's feeling sadness or guilt may hear the song and realize they're not alone. Mm. They're not the only person to feel this. At the same time, someone who's in a really great emotional state might hear that song and it might bring them down. Mm. So I, I wouldn't go so so far as to say all music should be happy and i've made a lot of very honest very authentic music about difficult things death depression and you know low points in career i tell the truth and also as a listener and I want to kick this over to you and hear your thoughts. As a listener, occasionally, but a lot in hard times, if I'm in grief or something and there's anger there, I will use rageful music. Mm. I have a playlist on my phone. It's called Back the Fuck Up. Mm. And it's D12 fight music. is Rage Against the Machine. is System of a Down, Chop Suey. And I'll go and I'll put it on and I'll just wail on a pillow hmm. and let all this anger out because anger unexpressed turns to sadness turns hmm. to depression so i use that that's not every day but it's every once in a while so i want i want to get your thoughts on that and what do you think about a some i guess sad songs hmm. connecting with people making them feel less alone and anger playlist and then a third one there's also on i would call it uninspired faith music mm. so someone can make a song that says all the right words about mm. god and they're quoting scripture but if they're in the emotional state of hey i'm actually trying to make some money mm. Just hoping to hit a christian banger <laughs> right right Which is the thing because there is a lot of money in christian mm. music and in and all this Any stuff music. right if they're they're making that kind of like the parents mm. if they're birthing this song from that standpoint but they're saying all the right words i think that frequency is crystallized in mm. that song so oh i i think it i think it's interesting because i understand the idea that if you are sad and sometimes it feels good to know that you're not alone i think the problem with that potentially is that because you almost feel like it's okay to feel sad then because there are other people that are sad. I have the music to help me cope with being sad. And you almost enjoy being in that sadness. So you create a safe space for sadness mm. and they almost don't want to leave it because most people join community because they find comfort there. Mm. And by creating a comfort, comfortable area, there's no incentive to leave. I think that we've had a place in society where we encouraged people to be really sad. And although I understand why that was, I don't know if that was necessarily the best because because of that, now we are at depression at all time highs. So did that actually help by helping people feel comfortable there? What if all music was hopeful? then would society become more hopeful? I don't know the answer to that. Or is it flipped? Mm. If society was more hopeful, there'd be more hopeful music. That's true too. Yeah. That was always the NWA argument, mm. right? And they try to outlaw that music or at least censor it or sequester it. Mm. And they, remember they started the parental advisory labels. Mm. And those guys said, if you want us to not make violent music can you fix our neighborhoods so they mm. aren't violent mm. if you want us not to talk about drugs and violence get the drugs and violence out of our neighborhood this is this is what it's like out here you want us to live here in the hood and then write kumbaya no nah, we don't live in kumbaya so I don't, I don't know i don't know the answer i mean i don't know if there is a concrete answer um, i do know that a lot of people wait and hope that, I'm in agreement with that part of what you said. Yeah, I mean, we hope that the establishments or authorities will fix something, and therefore we can react to it. Mm. And I think that model actually is incorrect because we've seen over the last many years, over the last 10, 15, 20 years, that 
the people at the top of society actually don't fix anyone's problems. Yeah. So hoping and waiting for them to fix it so that our lives can improve actually is it's false. Yeah, they don't know what they're doing, maybe. No clue. <laughs> I think we as a society need to almost self-correct and self-fix ourselves. And then the people in charge of our society will have to force them to react to how society has changed. And I think that's where music and culture comes in because music has the ability to drive the conversation and drive the change. And if, for example, if every music and every, I'm not saying it's possible, but what if? Everything you heard on the radio or in Spotify or whatever format you use was only positive. What would happen? Maybe people would start having more positive thoughts. And then you would see the corruption. You would see the lies more clearly because you only are surrounded by truth. Mm. But giving people an avenue to have falsehoods and have anger and sadness and whatever else, maybe it helps people keep people like within the system. I don't know the answer. I mean, yeah. it's all theoretical, really, because it's not possible. Of course it is, right? It, so what you talk, what I'm hearing, and I think it's, it's worth uh, distinguishing, there's, there's really two kinds of music, mm. or art, we can really call it. It's descriptive art. We're talking about what is, mm. and, and, and that can be beautiful. You can do it articulate and honest and nuanced even genius level description of what is or you can create a new so that's descriptive art or there's visionary art mm. where you can create a create something that doesn't exist mm. right like we talked about earlier with the affirmations yeah. and the yeah. incantation <laughs> exactly so that's that's one then secondly my only counter argument, or mm. not counter argument, the thought, thought, right? People started playing football, I believe, mm. to substitute for war, mm. right? Instead of having real fights, they play these football games. Or I think that, that has something to do with the origin of the Olympics, too. Mm. It's like instead of going to war with these countries, we're going to compete with them in this other way. And so when you described your utopian version of Spotify, <laughs> <laughs> I thought, yeah, maybe it would turn out like he's describing, or mm. maybe it's worse. <laughs> maybe it's worse, and people aren't expressing because these are ever, no no person goes through life without getting angry or mm. sad, right? That's part of being human. Jesus wept, mm. right? Yes. So if Jesus wept, I'm gonna weep mm. probably a lot in mm. my life. So. It's not ungodly to feel grief. Correct. So if you take away one's or an artist's ability to express grief mm. in what I would call often, not always, often a healthy way, mm. which is artistic expression. Mm. It's not killing yourself. It's not hurting someone else. It's not taking drugs. It's creating a piece of art. Mm. Then it, might, it, it could get worse, mm. you know? I know, let me put it like this. I know if I wasn't allowed to box or work out anymore, yeah. some anger might start coming out <laughs> sideways. You, <know? laughs> you need like that release valve. But I also, I also agree with, your saying, mm. with what you're saying at the same time. Because every morning I'm listening to uplifting songs every morning yeah. that I, as I do my, my mm. thing. And, I, and like I said, I use the back to fuck up playlist yeah. sparingly yeah. when needed. When needed. <laughs>